Fist, fist bump somebody next to you and say, I'm glad you're here. All right. I better do what I preach, right? Y'all can be seated for just a few moments. Welcome to our Section 9 She's for Christ kickoff rally. Section 9, Tennessee. Amen. Before we get started uh, with the service, with a time of worship, I do want to give honor to a few people that are here tonight. Um, as usual, we want to give honor to Brother and Sister Cagle, our Section 9 Presbyters. If you would stand, if you don't mind, both of you. We want you, let's make some noise for our Presbyter. Amen. And brother, and I think Brother Singleton is here, but I don't know where he is. Wave your hand at me. Stand up, Brother Singleton. Let's make some noise for our section secretary. Amen. Do we have any pastors in the house? I wonder if you'd stand right now. If you're holding your grandchildren, that's fine. Go ahead and stand. And pastor's wives or spouses, stand. Young people, let's make some noise and let our pastors know how much we appreciate and love them. Thank you for taking time out of your day to come. Is there any youth pastors or student pastors or youth leaders? We got one up here waving at me. We want you to stand right now because we want to make some noise for you. We got a few in the house. Amen. In section nine, we love our leadership. Amen. We also want to give honor to Pastor Wilkerson, who is actually in the sound booth. Wave your hand at us, Brother Wilkerson. We thank you and the host church for opening up your doors and all the work that you have done helping us out with the service. And we are also in section nine. To my knowledge, this is the first time that he has ministered or preached in section nine. We are honored to have Brother Wesley Stevens and his wife and family here tonight. We won't make you stand, but we love you. We appreciate you. We're glad that you're here. And I know he's going to deliver an awesome word of the Lord here in a little bit. Uh, I do know that since the, I think it was last year they were voted into this position, they've done a tremendous job. Um, now, after the gym, or after the service, excuse me, after the gym, we're going home, right? After the service, we're going to go to the high school gym here in Humboldt, and it's, it's going to be the nice one this time. Uh, amen. <laughs> There's not going to be any missing windows or mysterious creatures in the corner lurking, waiting to jump you while you go to the restroom or anything. But we are going to go to the nice high school gym this time. Um, we're going to have a good time. The entry charge, I'm sure most of you have probably already heard or seen it on Facebook, is $5 a person. That gets you two slices of pizza, some chips, a drink, desserts, and unlimited fun. Amen. We do want to let the parents know that children five and under will be getting in and eating free. All right. Amen. Somebody said amen. Um, and after, after service, if you did bring extra clothes that you need to change in, I know there's restrooms here, obviously, at the church, and they'll have some at the gym. We do at this time, though, we do need to have an idea, kind of a rough estimate of how many people we will have so we make sure we have enough food for everybody. So I'm asking, if you are going to stay after the service and go to the gym, will you please stand with me? Are you part of the count? All right. And just remain standing until I, I tell you you can sit down, please, unless you are medically unable, and then you can just go ahead and sit down. Um, I do want to make a few announcements before uh, we go any further. Um, the directions to the gym. So you will go out of the church here and get back on the, right at the bypass there, and you will take a right. Everybody say right. 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 Not left, but right. That's your right hand. Okay? And then you're going to go to the second stoplight. Everybody hold up a, a two or a deuce at me. All right? That's going to be the second stoplight. And then you turn right again. This is your right hand. All right? And then you go past the high school gym sign. You go past the city of Humboldt sign. And you'll take a right when you see a greenhouse. Everybody say greenhouse. Green you'll take a right there into a parking lot. You'll probably see some school buses, if I'm not mistaken. And we're going to be in the gym that's all the way down the hill there in front of the football fields. All right? 
If anybody gets lost, we'll laugh at you when you eventually get there. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I will tell you, though, that our offering, I know this is a She's for Christ rally, but our offering tonight will be our, our normal sectional offering. If we have any profit at the gym tonight, we are going to put it all towards She's for Christ. So if you are willing to come, please, please, if you need to or want or feel to donate at that time for She's for Christ, we will be giving that as an offering, as a section to She's for Christ. We're still counting. There's a lot of y'all tonight. Our next section rally will be in Tiptonville, which Brother Nash is the pastor there. I know he's already sitting down. He's getting a little elderly, so we understand. Um, I, I can do that. I love him. We also, um, it'll be Friday, May 1st, though. We also have a Section 9 Camp Lake Benson work day, Saturday, April 21st. Y'all can sit down, by the way. Thanks for standing. It'll be next Saturday, the 21st, and I believe we have the girls' dorm room, and we need to keep it nice because word gets around in the district that that's the best spot because we keep it up. Amen. Um, also, the Finley Youth. Finley Youth, wave at me. If you, oh, there you are. All right. Well, make noise, too. That's cool. Um, they will be having an event next Saturday evening from 6.30 to 9.30. It's called United, and they um, asked me that I'd open up to the section. So if you don't have anything going on at your local church, feel free to come on by and we'll have fun. Hopefully this time we won't have a tornado warning like last time. Also in Finley, there is a hyphen event in August called Provision. And it's going to be taking place August 11, Brother Murphy making some noise right there, their hyphen leader. There's going to be split sessions. Um, they're going to be ministering to our hyphen age in a general session with time of worship. Has anybody joined our Section 9 Tennessee Youth Facebook page? That was a mouthful. Anyway, I've got a few of you woohooing. Join our page. It's Section 9 TN for Tennessee, if you didn't realize that, youth. All right, all of our announcements are going to be on that page. We will try to get word out um, to your church if for some reason no one is represented on that page. But that's where you're going to find out what's going on. Everybody say choir. Choir. Everybody say it again. Choir. Choir. That was better. I am pleased to announce that we are going to restart our Section 9 Youth and Hyphen Choir. So we have got registration forms. That's okay if you're excited. Brother Cagle's excited, if nobody else. We've got registration forms in the foyer on that table. The young man was guarding tonight with his life that nobody would steal those cans yet. But there are registration forms on there for you to fill out. There's just a few questions, and then you'll have your pastor sign, and there's instructions what to do at that point. Is anybody excited about the service tonight? <laughs> Amen. This is our... Everybody say it's our, it's our section, She's for Christ rally. I wonder if I could get all the students and the hyphens to stand right now. I know you stood like 400 times, but that's okay. All the students in hyphen age, I got a bunch of them right in front of me. Everybody stand that's a student or hyphen that's about age 12 to 30 or so. We'll, we'll give it a 30. All right, there we go. Man, we cleared that up a little bit. <laughs> it is the weirdest thing tonight. For some reason, I got some things that I need to get rid of. I've got some She's for Christ earbuds. See, back in my day, we called them headphones, but now they're earbuds. Sounds a little bit better. And I've got a hot pink She's for Christ ball and a black She's for Christ ball. And what I'm going to do is toss it out to um, some individuals that know how to make some noise. All right. Oh, hey, there he goes. Man, we got a baseball player back there, Brother Damon. Who else we got? There you go. Keep going, keep going. Oh boy. Medic, medic. We're gonna have to have special prayer here in a second. <laughs> now, please at this time, 
so you can get a little bit of a rest. Go ahead and be seated one more time. You're getting your exercise in today. <laughs> I know we've had a good time so far, and we're going to continue to have a good time in the Lord. We're going to have an awesome service. I believe with everything inside of me, we're going to see students impacted by the Word of God and through the Holy Ghost here tonight. And it is okay to have fun in the, in the house of God, amen? I think it's in order to smile sometimes in the house of God. But She's for Christ is a crucial part of our district and our entire organization and the kingdom of God for that matter. She's for Christ is a way for all of us to give above and beyond what we give in tithe and offering at our local church. SFC gives students and people of all ages a chance to participate directly in the kingdom of God. Because you're not just giving to another fundraiser, you're giving directly to the kingdom of God. Did you know that when you give to She's for Christ, you make a lot of events specifically in Tennessee possible? I don't know if you knew that. Does anybody ever been to youth convention before? She's for Christ makes that happen. It helps make that happen. Anybody ever been to youth camp? It's She's for Christ that helps make that happen. Has anybody ever heard of senior Bible quizzing, Brother Jared Wilkerson? All right. Or Eagle Summit. I don't know if you've ever been, but it's a tremendous time for our young ministers to go, or ministers of all ages. She's for Christ dollars help make these things happen. You're not just given to another fundraiser. When you or me, when we take ownership of it and we give to She's for Christ, we are directly giving to the cause of the kingdom of God. All right? 40% of the money that we give towards this cause stays in the state of Tennessee and supports all the events and groups that I just mentioned. We're not just giving it away just to somewhere else. It actually stays in our district. But She's for Christ doesn't just stop in the state of Tennessee. It reaches beyond the borders of our state and our local communities because when you give to the cause of the kingdom, the She's for Christ reaches the entire continent of North America when just one or two or three or several students decide and make that sacrifice and give to She's for Christ. It, it helps support Tupelo Children's Mansion and Spirit of Freedom Ministries and Lighthouse Ranch for Boys. They're all supported through She's for Christ dollars. Your She's for Christ giving helps support our North American missionaries bring the gospel to hungry hearts and souls that are currently unreached. When a North American missionary has a burden in their heart, whether it's his or her heart, to reach into these communities, your She's for Christ dollars actually help make that happen. So when you give to the kingdom of God, you're directly helping the advance of the kingdom of God. Amen? It's a worthy cause. It doesn't just stop, though, with our borders in North America. But it actually reaches beyond our continent. She's for Christ helps fund our missionaries to bring the gospel and the message of Jesus Christ to all flesh on this planet. That's why we're here tonight. We are here to kick it off, so to speak, this kickoff rally. She's for Christ. It's not just another way to get a few dollars thrown at the church. It's actually you investing in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. It's helping bring the vision of, of the UPC, which is to preach the whole gospel to the whole world by the whole church. You make that happen when you give to these worthy causes. And we're not here just to raise money. We're here to help advance the kingdom of Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God. So that's why we are here tonight. Amen. I wonder if we could all stand right now. I want us to pray not only for She's for Christ this year, but also pray for the remainder of this service. Okay. Okay. Ministers, if you come right now, Parker's actually having an asthma attack. But how many know that, we, that when we pray, the Lord heals us? Amen. We know that he can be healed right now. I want us to bind together right now and pray for Parker. In the name of Jesus God, we pray right now. I pray that you would open up the airways right now, that a miracle would be performed. Lord, I've seen you raised from the dead. I've seen you set broken bones in place healed. I know this is not too hard for you. I know that the God is
Can we thank the Lord right now for healing Parker? Lord, we know that you're a healer. Amen. It's always in order to pray. Our She's for Christ goal for 2018, for just a minimum goal in section nine here is 14,000. And I know at first it might to some seem like it's too insurmountable or it's too much, too many zeros. But if, if just 100 people raised $140, that's all it would take. All right, and it's a worthy cause for the kingdom of God. I want us to all pray right now and bind together that we would pray for She's for Christ this year, that the Lord would move on each one of us to reach even further than we normally give. Because, you know, giving is a form of worship. It's a form of sacrifice. So I want us to pray for each one of us here tonight. And let's pray for the remainder of this service that the Lord would move in a mighty way. Let's pray right now together. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness, Jesus. We thank you for already showing up. We feel your presence here tonight, God. I felt it, Lord, long before this service ever started. I know you're in the house. And I know you're here, God, to move on every life, every heart, every soul. I pray that there be demonstrations of your power and demonstrations of your spirit in every student, God, every adult, every child in the house tonight. I pray that you'd move in our hearts, God, for she's for Christ this year, a worthy cause of the kingdom of God, that you would stir our hearts, Jesus. Just take over. Take the reins of this service here tonight and have your way. Lord, and we thank you and we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise His name. I will praise His name. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise His name. I will praise His name. For the rest of my life. For the rest of my life. I will forever proclaim He's good. He's good. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise His name. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise His name. I will praise His name. For the rest of my life, I forever proclaim He's good. He's good. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise His name. I will bless the Lord. I will praise His name for the rest of my life. I will ever proclaim He's good. He's good. Oh, magnify the Lord with thee. Let us exalt His name. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. For who is like our Lord and King, his glory and his fame? He is exalted above the heavens. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise his name. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise his name. For the rest of my life, I will ever proclaim He's good. He's good. I will bless the Lord. I will praise His name. I will bless the Lord. I will praise His name. For the rest of my life. I will ever proclaim He's good, He's good. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, let us exalt His name. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, let us exalt His name. For who is like our Lord and King, His glory and His He's exalted above the heavens. I will bless the Lord. I will 
bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will praise His name. I will bless the Lord. I will praise His name. I will bless the Lord.
victory has a name, and it's Jesus. Oh, the Word has a name. The Word has a name, and it's Jesus. Redemption has a name. Redemption has a name, and it's Jesus. Come on, let's lift it up. Holiness has a name. Holiness has a name, and it's Jesus. And it's Jesus. Victory has a name, and it's Jesus. The Word has a name, and it's Jesus. Redemption has a name. Let's lift our hands and continue this worship to Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, our healer. Lord, we're so thankful to be in your presence tonight. Jesus, Jesus. Does anybody here have a request of some kind, have a need of some kind, have a problem in their life, a situation, a sickness of some kind in their life? Would you raise your hand? If you look around for the people that did not raise your hand, maybe you've got it all in line right now. If you look around, your need is going to be someone else that's raising their hand tonight. The Bible talks about lifting each other up in prayer. Being, praying for your brother, praying for your sister. So again, one more time, if you have a need, a situation, a sickness, anything, anything in your life, something going on at school, whether it's something small or huge. I had a huge thing happen in my life today for the first time. My son, Parker, that we just prayed for, had an asthma attack. I'm a paramedic. I'm used to handling that, but it's a little bit different when it's my child. That's my need tonight. If you did not raise your hand, I want you to look around at someone that rose, raised their hand, and I want you to take that prayer request for them. Uplift them. You may not know their name. You may not know what their situation is, but God does. Let's take a moment and lift up every need that has been brought before this congregation tonight. Let's pray in the only name that we need, and that is the name of Jesus. Right now, Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for what you've done in this place so far. We thank you, Lord, for your mighty move your sweet spirit that is here, God. But there are many needs and many situations in this place. I know that you can answer each and every one, God. I pray that you will prove yourself to someone that's uncertain. I pray that you will be a friend to someone that needs you, God. 
I pray that your love will fall on each and every one of us that is in this place, Lord. We thank you, God, for the miracles that you're going to provide in this place, in these lives, God. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us here tonight. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We worship you, God. We magnify your name, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm looking forward to hearing a testimony of somebody saying, you know that little prayer request, that big prayer request that I had at that She's for Christ kickoff, that happened. God took care of it, whatever it is. I'm looking forward to hearing some of that. And we're going to put it on Facebook. If somebody comes to Brother Steed and put, lets us know, we'll put it on Facebook. Because everybody needs to know that. If everybody could be seated and our ushers come. Now, I was given strict instructions to pick one of y'all to pray. The bad thing is, I only know two of y'all's names. And neither one of them are looking at me. It's okay, I'm not going to do it. Lord, thank you very much for being here tonight. We thank you. For your presence, God, and your spirit that we're feeling in this place, we ask right now that you would anoint this offering, Lord, bless it and use it for your purpose, and we ask that you would bless the remainder of this service in Jesus' name, amen.
in our worship, break through in our praise, break through in our lift and glorify your name, break through in our dance, break through in our shout. You are the God, you are the child. Break through in my heart, break through in my mind, break through in my spirit, break through in my soul, break through in my weakness, break through in my struggles. You are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough in my worship, breakthrough in my praise, breakthrough in I live and glorify your name, breakthrough in I dance, breakthrough in I shout. You are the God, you are the God of the breakthrough. You are the God of the breakthrough. And when I can't see my way through, and I really don't know what to do, I look to you, breakthrough. Walls fall down when I shout through. Strong walls break when I pray through. So I'm going to praise you. You are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough. Oh, Tonight's our night to break through in Jesus. Break through in my heart. Break through in my mind. Break through in my spirit. Break through in my soul. Break through in my weakness, break through in my struggle. You are the God, you are the God of the Break through in my worship, break through in my praise, break through in our lift and glorify your name. Break through in our dance, break through in our shout. You are the God, you are the God of the Break through in my heart, break through in my mind, break through in my spirit, break through in my soul, break through in my weakness, break through in my struggle. You are the God. You are the God of the breakthrough in my worship, breakthrough in my praise, breakthrough in our lift and glorify your name, breakthrough in our dance, breakthrough in our shout. You are the God, you are the God of the That's what we're looking for tonight in this service. Amen. For people to be transformed in the Holy Ghost. Turn and take your neighbor. He's a way maker. Miracle. 
miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are.
just that today would you thank him all across this place come on when there seemed to be no way has he ever made a way for you hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus praise God praise God you can be seated thank you for your worship in the house of the Lord tonight it feels very good uh, in the house of the Lord tonight and I thank you for coming uh, as uh, this church has opened their doors to you and I apologize you're a little bit cramped there tonight but uh, I guess maybe we just didn't have enough faith to have chairs out, but we're going to learn that one quick enough, won't we? Uh, but man, oh man, thank you for being patient with us and worshiping in the house of the Lord. We are honored. I don't think anybody has traveled as far as this gentleman and his wife tonight to be with us. They are missionaries from the country of Brazil. And uh, Brother Anderson, come this direction tonight. We are honored to have them with us. They have ministered in some of our churches. And we are so honored to have Brother and Sister Anderson with us. And... Uh, I didn't put the name together. I think your wife was actually speaking in one of the minister sessions uh, at district conference and got to address the conference. And so it's good to have you all with us in Humboldt, Tennessee. I know he's going to be ministering uh, over the weekend. They got to go to Maryland and Connecticut area of the United States. So they've got quite a drive ahead of them in the next few days. Let's give him a warm West Tennessee welcome as he addresses us tonight. God, thank you so much. Amen. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord with some young people that believe this oneness apostolic message. Amen? Amen? There is nothing more powerful in this world than someone that is sold out to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's willing to go wherever, do whatever, by whatever means necessary so that some might be saved. It's an honor to be here in the Tennessee district. My wife and I are missionaries to the country of Brazil. We've been down in Brazil for the past four years. We are a young couple and um, looking at this youth rally and it makes me remember when I was your age and some of you might say well you don't look that far uh, from us and that is true but it's been about 14 15 years since I've been uh, sitting in the seats where some of you young people are sitting and I remember as a young person I grew up in New Hampshire uh, a lot of people don't even know where that is in America um, I've had people say yeah where in Pennsylvania is that I'm like no that's not how it works. And I remember, I don't know why I was at youth rallies. I think it was because my parents made me go. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> maybe it was the food. Maybe it was to talk to some girls. But either way, it was a time in which God reached down and picked me up and called me. And I just believe that this is the place that God can meet you. Peniel didn't mean that much maybe to Jacob when he was just arriving, but let me tell you, it had a greater significance after he was done doing what he needed to do. And I just believe tonight that you young people, that you're not too young. You haven't made too many mistakes. There are cities and nations, states, tribes that are waiting for you. 
you're not too young. One thing about this deputation that's, been, that's just encouraged me greatly is we've gone around the country now and I have seen young people come up to us after services saying, God's called me to a nation. God's called me to a people. Let me tell you, you can be an apostle. You can be someone that is sent to impact this world for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You don't have to have it all together. You don't have to have it all figured out. But if you'll just say, God, send me. Here am I. God will send you. He'll reach down and he'll find you where you're at. And this could be the place. I, I just believe there's a prophetic utterance in this place tonight that there are some young people that God is going to deal with you about cities and states and nations. And he'll going to call you to these places. Please, we want to thank you for giving to SFC. My wife and I, as missionaries in Brazil for four years, we were aimers, so we were associates in missions working under uh, our regional missionary in Brazil, Brother DeMerchant. So we didn't have an SFC car. I have to be honest with you, I'm a little bit bitter. Um, Brother DeMerchant, our, our missionary, drove around in his four-wheel drive truck with air conditioning, and I drove around in a Renault Clio. The only thing I can imagine, <laughs> some of you know what Renault's about. If you know what a Geo is, you remember the Geo Metros? My date, I might be dating myself right now. A little three-cylinder, two-door car uh, that we towed around Brazil for the past four years. No air conditioning. Uh, Amer we would pick up people that would come visit us from America, and they would say, bro, where's your cup holder? I don't have a cup holder. <laughs> this model doesn't come with a cup holder. Those are luxuries. So I was a little bit bitter, but now that I am appointed missionary, I am going to plug SFC until the day I die because I'm going to get that truck. Woo! I suffered enough. Amen. There were times we were going up mountains. Brazil's very mountainous, and um, there were people in the back of my car, and I'm saying, hey, I'm not trying to call you fat or anything, but this car is not getting up this hill. <laughs> and I'm the driver. <laughs> So I'm not getting out of this car. So somebody, something's got to budge here. But your SFC giving goes and impacts the world. About 30 some, some odd years ago, I'm dropping my stuff, the United Pentecostal Church, Brother DeMerchant was a young man. He was a pilot. And, he, and the Amazon, they said there are no roads, interstates. There still are none. Whenever you build an interstate in the Amazon, the jungle will take it back in literally about a year. It'll grow over the interstate you just built. Um, there's no way to reach these people by boat. You could take two to three weeks on a boat just to get on the other side of the Amazon going down stream. And airplanes are expensive. They're not cheap. Quarter of a million dollars is a starting price. And that doesn't even consider the $8 per gallon gasoline. That doesn't even consider all the airplane parts and maintenance. And people, I would imagine, about 40 years ago were saying, that's a big expense. I don't know if it's worth it, but let me tell you, because we dug a little deeper, because we reached a little farther and we tried a little bit harder, we purchased two airplanes in the Amazon. And because of those two airplanes, this is physical evidence, there were over 100,000 people along the Amazonian jungle river basin that are a part of our church, that are baptized in Jesus' name, that have received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that's today. There could be over a million people that have gone before that have reached this gospel because SFC gave. So your money goes. Yes, it's going to buy me a car that's I'm going to have air conditioning and cup holders. But it's going to reach people that you'll never meet. But when we get around the throne, John said in Revelations that he saw a number that no man could number from every tribe, from every nation, and from every tongue. And they were all praising the one true living God. So reach a little bit deeper today. Push a little bit more. I believe that God has something great in store for this service. We want to thank you all for your hospitality and thank all the leadership. We love Tennessee. We love you all. We're believing in you. We believe in this generation. There's young people that are going to be picking up mantles. We have a lot of older missionaries that are going to be retiring and getting sick and coming off the field. And we need young people that are willing to take up those banners and say, I'll go to a nation. I may not know how to speak their language, but I'll go. I'll do whatever it has to take to fulfill God's will in my life. God bless you all in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. If you would, let's stand together tonight. We're getting ready to bring a great friend of uh, mine to the pulpit. And I'm going to tell you who you see tonight is...
who we get to work with uh, closely beside him. He's not any different when he's out in a crowd than when you're beside him working on meetings and organizing events. And I'm thankful uh, for the Christian that he is and what he is doing in our Tennessee youth. And I'll tell you what, brought uh, great vision and uh, there is great momentum right now among our youth group. And I am thankful for that. And uh, Brother Stevens is coming this direction tonight. Would you ask the Lord to speak to you right now? Don't pray for your neighbor. Would you pray for yourself right now? Lord Jesus, I ask God that you would use the word of the Lord to speak to me. God, I want your word to be relevant in my life. I want you to speak revelatory, oh God, to me tonight. Open my eyes that I may see. Open my ears that I may hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church tonight we ask Lord use this word to edify and also to glorify you I pray in Jesus name amen amen let's give brother Stevens a welcome tonight he's coming to minister the word praise the Lord everybody it's great to be in the house of the Lord tonight with so many dear friends really quick I would like to give honor to the presbyter and section 9 brother Kegel we do honor you and appreciate your leadership in our district Amen. Amen. I also appreciate the section on youth director, brother and sister Steve. They're tremendous leaders, wonderful people. And we're so glad to have them a part of our team. Also, I honor brother and sister Wilkerson, the pastors here, and also the Tennessee Youth Secretary. Let's give them a hand, right? We love them. All the hard work they put in. Do have a couple of surprises that snuck in today. And it's my uncle, Byron, and my Mima. She's here. We, we well, I love you, Mima, and I'm so thankful that you're here tonight. They surprised me tonight, so I'm a little off, caught off guard. So if I don't preach nearly as good as I typically do, it's because I have more pressure than I typically have on me. But uh, we, we are so thankful you're here. And then my wife, Lindsay, she is here, and our two children, uh, two-year-old Hazel and our four-year-old Knox. And uh, they aren't in here right now, which means that one of them potentially got in trouble. So and I'm going to guess it's the eldest. But it is an honor to be here. And last, but definitely not least, I honor you, the students of Section 9. Look around you. This place is packed. And it's because you decided on a Friday night that you wanted to come and worship God and see what the Word of God had for you. So give yourself a hand for being here tonight. There are others in the room, I will get myself in trouble if I mention everyone, but I, there is a large group from Finley here, and Finley is just my second home. Uh, so I do honor brother and sister Ellingsworth as well. Let's get into the word, is that all right? Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. Probably shouldn't take you that long to find it in the word. It's the very first verse. I think we can all do it. We'll read a couple of verses here in this chapter. You know, the, the song that they were singing last, Waymaker, it talks about how even if we don't see it, we know that God's working. And even if we don't see it, we know that He's working. I'm not trying to be prophetic here, but tonight I, I just believe that God, there's been someone in this room that you've been looking a long time for your answer. And I believe that God tonight is going to give you a word. He's going to speak faith into your life. He's, maybe you have not seen it, but tonight, maybe for the first time in your entire life, you will see it. You will see what God has for you. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. It reads, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved. I don't know about you, but I like it when the Spirit moves. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Dropping down to verse number 9 in the same chapter, it starts with, And God said. And it finishes with, And it was so. Verse number 11 of the same chapter declares, And God said, and it ends with the four-word phrase, And it was so. In the 14th verse, the writer tells us, And God said. And it closes in verse 15 by stating, And it was so. 
Nine verses later, the 24th verse of Genesis chapter 1. It begins with, and God said. Are you seeing a pattern yet? That verse concludes, and it was so. And then verse 29, it proclaims, and God said. And it should not come to a surprise to us. That in verse 30, it ends. And let's say it together. And it was so. Can I tell you tonight that when God says it, he completes it. When God speaks it, he, he sees it through. And so with God's help tonight, I want to preach on this simplistic title, When God Speaks. When God Speaks. Let's lift up our hands towards heaven right now. God, we love you, Jesus. Lord, we're so thankful for your presence, God, that we felt in this place. God, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would move in a mighty way. God, I pray that you would anoint me to preach your anointed word and that you would anoint their ears to hear and their hearts to receive. God, I pray that a life would be changed tonight. I pray that someone would receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the first time with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And God, we will give you the glory and the praise for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Thank you so much for worshiping. Didn't the worship team do a fantastic job tonight? Amen. When God speaks, I don't know about you, but I just get excited just hearing that when God speaks. It was in the beginning of time where we see matter and space not being developed. And the, and the Bible, it paints a, a picture of bleakness and sets a scene of hopelessness. For it was within our world that there was nothing but darkness and emptiness and disorder. But as soon as the writer could describe the gloom and doom of, the, of our world, Scripture proclaims that the Spirit of God began to move. And that as the Spirit of God began to move, that God began to speak. I believe before we leave this place tonight that the Spirit of God is going to move and that God is going to speak to our hearts. But I've come to tell you tonight that I am far less concerned with where the Word is going. And I am much more concerned with where the Word has come from. For if it is the word that has come from the very heart and mind and will of the Almighty God, then can I tell you tonight, it does not matter the chaos that's in your world. It does not matter the darkness that you're facing. It does not matter the hopelessness of your situation. For when God speaks to a condition, circumstances and situations bend and change at the word of the Lord. When the glory and power of God enter a room, everything else takes a back seat. I know that I'm starting off hot tonight, and usually I try to, to kind of coast into this thing, but I just feel kind of like the prophet Jeremiah. I, I have a word for somebody in this sanctuary tonight, and it is a burning word like into fire. Shut up in my bones. I believe that God in this place is going to speak to somebody. Oh, somebody in this room, you need, you're desperate for a voice. You're desperate for a word. You're desperate for a move of God. Can I tell you that he is right now working on your behalf? He is dramatically going to change some things in your world. And before you know it, your world is going to be turned upside down. It does not matter where you find yourself today. It does not matter the disarray of your scenario. It does not matter the hopelessness that you feel in your situation. It does not matter how dark it has been in your life lately. For the Almighty, I believe this with all my heart, the Almighty is going to bring order to your chaos. He is going to bring light to your darkness. He's going to bring faith to your hopelessness. And He is going to bring joy to your emptiness. You may not see it yet. You may not have felt it yet. But I I promise you, before you leave tonight, God can speak to you. And God can change some things in your life.
Hebrews 11th chapter, the third verse says, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The psalmist said in Psalm chapter 33 verse 6, By the word of God were the heavens made. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea together as an heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. But why? Why should we stand at all of him? It's in the very next verse. In verse number 9, it says, For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Tonight, if only you understood the power and the authority in a spoken word from the Almighty God. If you only knew the power that's within the grasp of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Can I tell you tonight that God still is absolutely in control of our world? There is not a fraction of it that he has lost his grip, but he is in absolute control of everything that takes place anywhere. Can I tell you that he still has absolute authority in heaven? That he is still fully in control here in earth? And the last time I read in the Bible, it says that he took the keys to hell and the grave. Can I tell you that he's in control down there too? <laughs> Meaning no matter where you find yourself tonight, if you find yourself in the heavenlies or you find yourself beaten up, can I tell you that God is with you? That he has not left you. That he has not forsaken you. But that wherever you're at, you are within reach of the almighty God. He alone has absolute authority. For it is when God speaks. It is when God speaks that he completes. It's when God speaks that he sees his creation come to fruition. It's when God speaks that we know it is done it's not up for debate tonight we're not here to discuss is God in control scripture paints it very clearly that he has all authority and that he has no plans to give that power up I don't care tonight what giant you see in front of you. I don't care what your circumstance is saying. I don't care what the doctors have told you lately. All I care about is what is God saying? What is it that God's saying? What is it that he is putting forth on behalf of you? For God is omnipotent. For God is almighty. For God is unstoppable. He is unshakable. He is invincible. And tonight, he deserves our praise. Like I mentioned earlier, I have two children. One of them is is two, and her name is Hazel. We affectionately call her in my household the hurricane. Sometimes we just go Hurricane Hazel. She understands. She comprehends. She, she's actually a really, I, I, maybe I'm partial here, but I think she's a great little girl, and she listens actually very well, for the most part. I'm like, babe, you, you know, you want to go grab dinner? And she's like, yeah, daddy, yeah, you know, I do. And the first few times that happened, I have to be honest, I was kind of shocked that she was so willing to listen. But I have discovered that the more toys that she has and the more gadgets that are around the house, she has a, a tendency to get distracted. And there are times that I'll say, hey, Hazel, let's, you know, let's go to, to tonight, you know, night, night, let's go to sleep. And, and she'll do this thing where she'll say, Like, Hazel, it's time to, go, time to go to bed. Huh? It's time to put the toys up. Huh? And what I've come to realize is that she isn't ignoring me. She hears what I'm saying, but she's distracted by something else around her. And it causes me to have to 
repeat myself. I have to say it once, twice, sometimes three times. And sometimes if she lucky, she's lucky she gets to hear it four times before I start counting to three. But can I tell you tonight that when God speaks, unlike us parents that have to repeat ourselves, God doesn't have to do that. When God speaks, he doesn't have to raise his voice. When God speaks, he doesn't have to make a compromise on his word. He doesn't have to say, will you do this for me? If you're not willing, maybe you can just do that instead. When God speaks, can I just tell you, he means what he says. He means what he says, and he does not have to repeat himself. He did not say in Genesis chapter 1, let there be light. Come on, light. I said, let there be light. Oh, come on, son. Would you just shine a little bit for me? Come on, could I just get a handful of stars to start shining for me? No, no, God didn't have to beg. When God said, let there be light, there was light. He didn't have to repeat himself. He didn't have to say it again. He didn't have to sit and say, please, please, please. No, God has absolute authority. And when he speaks, he completes. Your adversary tonight, he knows the power and authority that's in our God. James, the second chapter, the 19th verse says, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and they tremble. Can I tell you that on day one, hell was terrified because it discovered that our, when our God speaks, it is for him to do. It is for him to see. It is for him to complete. Since then, time and time and time again, when God has said something, hear me, student, when God has said something, it takes place exactly the way he said it would. The devil, he knows sure well that when God speaks, there is no compromise on that word that's going to happen exactly as he says. The Lord said, let there be light, and there was light. The Lord spoke to the winds and said, peace be still, and the, the winds were calmed. The Lord said, destroy this temple, and in three days, I'll raise it up. And what happened? On the third day, the stone was rolled away, and Christ came out of the grave. The devil, he knows the authority that's in God. He knows that he has no authority, no power likened unto our God. But can I tell you, the devil's still stupid sometimes. Just because he knows something doesn't mean he's not willing to try it. There's a portion in Isaiah, the 14th chapter and the 14th verse. The devil gets this idea that he's going to ascend above the heights of the clouds. And he's going to be like the Most High. I know I don't have that authority and power, but I'm going to try it anyways because it seems nice. Can I tell you what the Lord's response was when the devil had that attitude of I'm going to be like the Most High? We find it in Luke chapter 10 verse 18. It says, and he said unto him, them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from the heavens. Can I tell you any time any time, at any place, when anyone tries to compare themselves to God, God will shoot them down. I don't care how much the devil has told you lately that he has authority in your life. Can I tell you, when you start calling on the name of the Lord, when you start calling on the name of Jesus, he has, he has no choice to make in the matter. He has to depart from you. For when God speaks... It happens. I don't know about you tonight. I don't know what you're thinking right now. But I know for me, when I start considering the fact that when God speaks, he completes. When I start considering the fact that when God says something, it happens. When I start thinking about the fact when, when God has spoken things into my life. When I start to, to comprehend the fact that God has called me. That God... 
that God has called me. Not me calling myself, but that the Almighty God has called me. When I begin to think about the times that he has spoken to me around the altar, when I begin to think about the callings that he's placed on my life, the ministry that he's given me, when I think about the things that he has told me time and time and time again, I begin to get excited because I think of the fact that I'm going to overcome so much in my life because God has said that I am. When I think about the things that God has said, I begin to recall them to my mind as the prophet said. And therefore I have hope. Hope in any situation because I know what he has called me into. And tonight I wonder for the students that are in this room, what has God called you to be? What has God called for you to become? What has God placed in your future? What has God placed in, in your family? Some of you, God's called your family back to church. You may be the only one right now living for God. But can I tell you tonight, your attitude should be, God, I'm going to continue to have faith. For as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Maybe they're not serving them now. But I believe that God is speaking on behalf of my family. Some of you in the room, you're thinking to yourself, well, God's never spoken to me before. I've never hear, heard a, an audible voice. I've never heard God speak out loud to me. I, I've never heard direction. It, it must be nice to be a, a pastor or a preacher because then you hear the audible voice of God, right? No. No. Can I tell you tonight that I have never heard an audible voice from God, yet God has spoken into my life? Can I tell you tonight that when you have the word of God, God is speaking for all scripture, is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. If you have a Bible, can I tell you God speaking to you? From Genesis to Revelation, you are blocked and you are loaded with promises, gifts, callings from the Almighty God. God's never spoken to you audibly before, but can I tell you, he's written love letters to you. He's putting promises into your life. He has given you a word. All you have to do is open up the word of God and it's there for you. Oh, come on, somebody. He's already spoken peace over your mind. Some of you, he's already spoken healing over your body. Some of you, God's already spoken things over your future. He's already spoken visions. He's already spoken dreams. He's already spoken miracles. And they're for you in the word of God. Some of you, you know God's spoken to you. You know you've, you've heard the voice of God. You, you have felt his spirit impress you. You have picked up the word of God and you have read it for yourself and you see what God has said for you to do. You know that God has spoken to you. You know what calling he has placed in your life. You know what your future in God's eyes looks like. You know what his presence, you remember what his presence felt like when you were at that altar and that promise was made to you. You remember at youth camp when God put a specific thing in your heart. You remember at youth congress when God shook you about something that you've never felt before. You know when you went into that prayer room that one, one night before church started, God began to speak to you something completely and totally brand new. There are some in this room, you know for a fact that God has spoken to you. But you have not acted on it yet. God has spoken. You have heard his call, but you have not acted on it yet. You're cognizant, you're aware of the fact that he has spoken to you, but for one reason or another, you have put it on the back burner. The psalmist said in Psalm 62, 11, God hath spoken once. Because all it takes is for God to speak once. But twice have I heard this. 
that power belongeth unto God. God, he said it one time to me. But for whatever reason, I didn't act on it that first time. So it took me hearing it for the second time. It took me going to the altar for a second time and remembering to mind that which God had called me to do. I wonder in this room tonight how many callings, how many promises are just waiting on you getting up and doing something about it. How many, how many sl promises have slipped through the couch cushions and you have completely and totally forgotten about them? Perhaps tonight you don't need a new word from God. You need to hear that word again. God's promised this in my life. I completely forgot about it. I went this way. But is God calling you back to that original word? Once God has spoken, but twice have I heard it. Twice have I heard that word that God has spoken over my life. Hear me, student. God does not need to call you twice into the ministry. God does not need you to be called twice to start a P7 Bible study at your school. God does not need to call you twice to be a soul winner. God does not need to call you twice to be a Sunday school teacher. God does not need to call you twice to be a person who raises funds for Jesus for Christ. All God has to do is speak once. But it's our job when we don't act that first time to go back and to hear it again. Oh, could it be tonight that your promise is just waiting on you to get up? Just waiting on you to get out of your comfort zone, to get out of your conveniences, and to say, I remember the word that God spoke to me. Oh, I wonder in this room, are there any promises that God has spoken that you have not received yet? Is there anything that you know for a fact God has called you to do, but you have not seen it with your two eyes yet? Can I challenge you tonight? It's time to hear it again. It's time to hear it for the second time. Could it be, student, that the reason you don't have what God wants for you in your life is because you haven't tried something new for him? I have learned that sometimes it takes me getting outside of my comfort zone and trying something I've never done to get something from God that I've never had before. Can I tell you, student, tonight that there is incredible awkwardness the first few times you do something new for God. I remember the first time I went into a Wednesday night youth service back in Nashville, Tennessee, and I lifted my hands during a worship song. Can I tell you, it was one of the most awkward things that I had ever done up to that point in my life. When I raised my hands, I thought that everybody was staring at me. That everybody was judging me. That everybody was thinking that I was some type of loser, perhaps. But can I tell you that when I raised my hands, I began to understand a revelation about God. And that is that He is absolutely worthy of all of my praise. It went, it took me to go through some awkwardness to get a revelation from God. Tonight, you just may have to get out and have some awkward steps, but I promise you, God is not going to leave you void when you start taking those steps in faith towards the calling of God that he's placed in your life. You are going to begin to have some revelation in your life. God's going to make a way when there seems to be no way. Hear it again tonight. Hear that call again tonight. Too many people, they are asking God for a fresh word. I've been guilty of this too. Coming in saying, God, I need a fresh word from you tonight. Can I tell you, I was wrong so many times. Because all I needed was to hear that old word again. All I needed was to hear that old promise again. All I needed to see was things that were already written for me in Scripture. 
I wish tonight, if you understand and comprehend anything when you leave this place, you understand that the word of God was written for you. It was not written for those that were perfect. It was not written for those that were self-righteous. It was not written for those that had everything figured out. It was written for those that were weak. It was written for those that were broken. It was written for those who had need. It was written for those that needed healing in their body. (laughs) Scripture says it's through his stripes that we are healed. Not that we might be healed. Too many times we come begging God, God, is it your will? God says it's through his stripes that you are healed. Tonight, maybe you don't need a new word. You just need to hear that old word again. In, the math, in Matthew chapter 4, Satan is once again doing something he knows he shouldn't do and is not going to get away with, but he tries it anyways. In the south, we would say, just, Lord, bless him. Just bless him. Bless him, Lord. That's right, Brother Kegel. Just bless him. He goes to, to Jesus in the wilderness, and he tries to tempt the Lord three separate times. You know how Jesus responded all three times? He said the first time, it is written. And then the second time, he said, Satan, it is written. And the third time that Satan tried to tempt the Lord, Jesus told Satan, Satan, understand it is written. It's not new news, devil. It's the old word that's already been written. And it was that third time that Jesus said it is written that the devil got up and he fleed him. He knew he couldn't have victory over him. What if tonight, while the devil's trying to attack you, steal your joy, take your callings from you, you just began to quote scripture? Have we lost the importance of quoting scripture? Have we lost the value of speaking the word of God? I remember when I was a young person, I used to go into the prayer room, and I just, confession's good for the soul. That's what one author said. And and anyways, I would go to the prayer room, and I would see other people praying but reading their Bibles at the same time, and I used to think to myself, that's incredibly weak. They don't know how to pray. I remember I was so incredibly bold and not so intelligent. I would get by them and I would begin to pray loud so they could hear me just in case they needed help. (laughs) But can I tell you tonight that they knew exactly how to pray? They knew exactly how to pray. They knew if they just got the word of God and began to speak promises as prayers unto God. Well, my family doesn't all have the Holy Ghost, but this promise is for you and your children and to as many as the Lord our God shall call. It's written. It's in the Word of God. God in the Word from Genesis to Revelation, He has promises, prophecies, purposes, and plans for each and every young person that's in this room. And if you understood the power that's within the Word of God, reading it would no longer seem like a chore. Memorizing it would no longer be difficult. Quoting it would not be abnormal. And let me tell you, Scripture would be more than just something that you post on Instagram. If you knew the power that's within the word of God, you would begin declaring it to your enemy. You would begin to proclaim it over your illness. You would begin to speak to your depression, to your anxiety, to your family issues, and say, devil, I don't think so. For the word of God, for thus saith the word. (laughs) Student, hear me tonight. The Word of God needs to be more than just a decorative piece in your house. 
It needs to be more than just something you glance upon every now and then. It needs to be more than just words on a screen in your church. But the word of God needs to be hidden in your heart. It says in scripture, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. There is such incredible power within the word of God. There's tremendous power, students, in the word of God. There's tremendous power when the spirit of God begins to move and it agrees with the word of God. But can I tell you a third way that the Word of God eh, has true power in the hearts and lives of saints everywhere, and that is when we begin to quote it, when we begin to speak it. I don't know what it is, but there's something about when we release our lips and tongue to speak victory over our lives that something just seemingly happens. Could it be like Proverbs 18, 21 says that death and life are in the power of the tongue? Anyone notice that death is mentioned first? Could it be because as human beings we are always pessimistic first? In our situations, when we're facing our giants, we're going to talk about how it's going to destroy us before we start speaking life about how God has already overcame our enemies. Tonight, when you leave this place, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, if you just begin to speak differently into your situation... Instead of walking out of here and saying, woe is me, and having a pity party. Instead of saying, God's just not going to do it because I'm not good enough. What if you came to the altar and said, God's going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. I may not see it yet. I may not feel it yet. I may not hear it yet. I may not, it may not be happening yet. But I'm going to go up to the front and I'm going to worship as if it has already taken place in my life. What instead of us being doom and gloom, we started celebrating what's already been written in the word of God. If I remember, the victory has already been won. It's not up for debate tonight. It's not up for uh, luck or chance or anything like that. The victory has already been won. I believe it's just us required to step out and say, we will have victory in our own lives. Joel said in Joel 3.10, let the weak say, I am strong. This seems like an oxymoron, I know. It seems like something that doesn't make sense. But there is something that just is incredible, dare I say supernatural, when a person that's been beat up by this world says, I know you think I look this way. I know that maybe I even feel this way. But I am going to declare the word of God says that while you may see me be weak, I am strong. Let's stand to our feet tonight. Tonight, you are not defined by how you feel. Tonight, you are not defined by what mess you're in. Tonight, you are not defined by why, but what you're surrounded by. Scripture says, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. There are students in this room, I know you're facing things. I know in our world, seemingly, all we talk about as Christians is the darkness. Can I I just say that some of us, we spend too much time on Facebook complaining about our world. Spend too much time on Facebook giving credit to the enemy. Can I just tell you, and I'm not trying to get political here tonight, but it doesn't matter what a Democrat does or a Republican does, ultimately. The only thing that really matters is what is God doing? What is God doing? Student, tonight, can I tell you, it does not matter what's going on in your world right now. It does not matter the chaos. It does not matter the darkness that seems to be all around you. It does not matter the gloom and doom that might surround you. All that matters tonight is that God is still in charge. Ecclesiastes, the 8th chapter, the 4th verse says, Where the word of a king is, 
there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? Can I give you the Wesley Stevens translation real quick? It's this. When the king speaks, when the king speaks, power goes forth. And anyone who isn't the king can't debate if what the king said was true or accurate or what should have been said. When the king speaks, it's only the opinion or fact of the king that matters. In this room right now, the king of kings and the Lord of lords is speaking. He is speaking into the hearts. He is speaking into the lives. He is speaking into the minds of students across this room. Tonight, I believe he is putting callings on people's lives. I believe it's in rooms, in sanctuaries just like this, in services just like this, when God's word can go forth and it can call someone to the mission field. I believe it's in a service just like this when God's word can go forth and it can call a soul winner out. I believe it's in a service like this when God can say, hey, you remember that high school and middle school you attend? It's time to plant the word of God there. For where the word of a king is, there is power. <laughs> the enemy... And some Christians think that the schools have already been occupied by the darkness. But there's a generation rising up that's saying, I'm going to take the word of a king and I'm going to take it back into my school. Tonight, tonight, the voice of the little king is going forth. How are you going to respond to it? How are you going to respond to it? You have two options tonight. One, you can just hear the king and say, you are the king. I believe in what you're saying. Or you can think of all the reasons why what God is putting in your heart can't come true. You may think tonight you're not good enough for the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you that's not the word from the king? You may say to yourself, I've done too much tonight. I can't get right with God. But can I tell you that's not the word from the king? Tonight in this room, you may say, I am the weakest, I am the smallest, I can't do anything for the kingdom of God. Can I tell you that's not the word from the king? He is calling you. He is pulling at you. He has put you here for a purpose. For a specific thing. And tonight, you just have to follow after that call. You just have to follow after that word. They're going to begin to sing. I want to invite you to this, to this altar. It's at this altar that I'm going to invite each and every one of you. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. You can just go ahead and make your way to this altar right now. Because I believe that the word of the king has gone forth. And when God speaks, he completes. Come on, there are students coming across this room tonight. There's plenty of room at this altar. Come on, God is speaking right now. Come on, as you come forth, why don't you just lift up your hands. Why don't you begin right now to speak in faith, saying, God, I know that you're speaking to me. Come on, there's still plenty of room around this altar. Come on, I want students that want to hear from the King. I want to see students that want a desire to hear from the Lord tonight. I give myself away. What's he calling you into tonight? What is he calling you into tonight? Can I tell you whatever he's calling you into? It's not a lie. God is not a man that he should lie. If God's speaking, he's speaking truth to you right now. As God's speaking to you, 
He's speaking purpose in your life that nobody can strip from. Come on. Come on. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so in this place. Begin to agree with what the Spirit of God is putting on you. Begin to agree with what God is calling you into. Maybe you came in this place and you have been down, you have been out. Tonight you should say, Rejoice not against me, O oh my God. For when I fall, I shall arise. Come on, students, he was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your sins. His stripes give us healing. He's fighting for you. He desires to give strength to the weary. Today can be the day of salvation for someone.